Hey friends! Welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video on Franken patterning. I apologize for the long silence in between videos. I had every intention of posting a tutorial last month, but there were some technical difficulties that arose and I have been extremely busy. I am a teacher by day and so with school back in session and all in person, no more virtual learning for now, I have been extremely busy with that. In addition, I had a lot of orders come in for my business, so I've been busy filling those orders. And then finally, I've been preparing for our once a year big photo session, which will occur in November this year. I have five different models and we will be recreating scenes from Pride and Prejudice. So stay tuned for some behind the scenes footage on that as well as lots of fun photos coming later this year. But I have been making all of the garments for those five models, designing all of the new dresses and outerwear that they will be showcasing in preparation for releasing my Pride and Prejudice line of ensembles that will be available in the shop later this year. As part of the lead up to this Pride and Prejudice photo shoot and new designs, there are several events happening on Instagram that I hope that you will check out and take part in. There's going to be several Instagram live book discussions about Pride and Prejudice and some other books that I read about the historical context surrounding Pride and Prejudice. And I will be having a guest speaker each time coming in and we will be discussing those books. So I hope that you'll tune in for those. And I will also be hosting a watch party for a version of Pride and Prejudice. Which version is yet undecided? I will be putting that to vote in my story polls pretty soon here on Instagram. So hop over and follow me on Instagram if you aren't already there so that you can participate in all of those fun events, especially if you love Pride and Prejudice and Regency era style. However, Regency is not the subject of today's video. Today's video is about Franken patterning. About a year ago, I released a Franken patterning video about how I created a dress that was similar to Lucy's in the Chronicles of Narnia Prince Caspian movie that was released about 10 to 12 years ago. I talked you through all the different pieces that I took from different patterns, how I made sure that those pieces would fit together, and then I showed you the finished dress. Well, Franken patterning is a never ending topic and so when I went to create my sister's witch costume for Halloween this year, I realized that I could create a second Franken patterning video that would show you some more information on how to successfully Franken pattern your own dresses and outfits. Last year's video was on using Franken patterning to create an outfit or a dress that you have seen in a movie. So basically using Franken patterning for cosplay. This year's video about Franken patterning is more focused on using Franken patterning to recreate an outfit that is in a historical drawing. I found out earlier this year that my sister has always wanted to be a witch for Halloween. So after much discussion and many texts back and forth, many pictures sent back and forth, many uh, views on Pinterest and looking at pictures on Pinterest, we came up with a general witch dress design that she was wanting. And at first, I thought I was going to use different elements from several different photos that she and I had found from different historical pictures and drawings and images. However, this summer, I discovered a drawing that actually encompassed all of the details that she wanted in her witch costume. This was a picture from the Ladies Home Journal in 1911 and it had almost every single detail that she and I had discussed for her witch costume. So I decided that I would use Franken patterning to recreate this exact look in all black fabric. So just like when you are using Franken patterning to create a cosplay, you need to pay attention to all the details of the outfit, starting with the bodice. So you need to look at the bodice design in the image or the picture or whatever it is that you're trying to replicate, and you need to 
figure out as best as possible, does this bodice have darts? Does this bodice have princess seams? What is the construction of this bodice? In addition, you need to look at things like the neckline features. Does it have a round neck, a scoop neck, a square neck, a V-neck? What are the different features that the neckline has? Next, you want to pay attention to the sleeves. Of course, look at the length. Are they long or short or elbow length? Look at the fact of are they fitted or are they puffed? Are they a coat sleeve in two pieces and super fitted? Or are they just a one piece sleeve that is fitted to the armhole? If they are puffed, how much do they seem to be puffed? Are there extra details on the sleeves such as pleating or ruffles or anything else like that? You also want to look at the skirt part or the bottom part of the outfit. In this case, it was the skirt. And you want to look at the details there. Is the skirt gathered? Does it appear to have a slight flare? So is it an A-line skirt? Does it appear to be straight or narrow? Does it have any details on it? Once again, pleats, gathers, any kind of decorative touches. And finally, you wanna look at the closure. What appears to be the closure for this outfit? Does it seem like it's gonna close in the back or in the front or that it pulls over the head? what appears to be the closure. So in the case of this witch costume from the drawing in the 1911 Ladies Home Journal, when you look at this picture, you will see that there's a square neckline with a bodice that seems to kind of copy the styles of the 1700s. You have the kind of stomacher appearance and then you have the curved princess seams that run on each side of the stomacher. You have some sort of like bows or ties there in the center front. And then when you look at your sleeves, you have the elbow length sleeves with ruffles on them. Then you of course look at the skirt. One of the things I failed to mention on the bodice is that it has a V bodice in the front center. And so then you want to look at your skirt as well. You're going to have to make sure that that skirt has that V cut into it. The skirt seems to have some slight gathers as well as being flared and having a ruffle on the bottom. Now we know to be truly historically accurate to copy the styles of the 1700s that this dress would close in the front with pins on the stomacher. But because it's a Halloween costume for my sister, first off, I was not interested in being that historically accurate. I don't know a lot about historical dress construction in the 1700s because that's not my era of expertise. And also I know that my sister is not going to care about it being historically accurate. She's just going to want it to look good, fit well, and be easy to get on and off. So I did cheat and put a zipper in the back of it. That's how I decided to close it. And I also noticed on the bodice, one of the most complicated pieces of this Franken patterning was that there was this kind of sheer white looking underlay in the bodice. And so you will see, I'll show you more details, kind of how I struggled to make that work out. I was able to succeed, but it was a bit of a struggle to get there. And so I will show you step by step how I was able to achieve that look as well. And then finally, of course, just like any good witch costume, it has a cape. Thankfully, capes are very easy to find as patterns and I actually was able to use a pattern almost exactly the way it came with a few small changes which I will show you here shortly. All right so here are the patterns that I have found to recreate this witch costume from the 1911 drawing. The first one of course that I wanted to find was the bodice and so I found this Miss Call's costume 6139 that is obviously a spin off of dresses from the 1700s, although it's not historically accurate. It does have the elements that I need. It has the square neckline. It has the fake stomacher kind of look. It has, even has sleeves that will mostly work for what I'm looking for. And so this will definitely be a good pattern for the bodice and the sleeves because it has many of the elements that I'm looking for. Of course, I'll remove the ruffle here and I'm gonna make some changes here in the front as far as adding some ties and incorporating the sheer underlay, but I will be able to mostly use this pattern 
for the bodice and the sleeves. Next we have this McCall's costume that I'm actually able to use almost as is for the cape. It has the high collar on the Magicians, the View E, and the length of the cape is just a little bit longer than in the drawing, so I'm going to shorten it a little bit, and I'm also going to add some ties right here, so I'm going to make those two small changes, but otherwise I should be able to mostly make this to recreate the cape. This McCall's costume pattern, this 2056, that is probably from the 1980s, it's from my mother's collection, has the perfect skirt. It has the V in the skirt, so I shouldn't have to adjust it in order to fit on the v shaped bodice. It has a flared skirt that has some gathers in it, and then I will cut my own ruffle out of the chiffon to go along the bottom of this skirt. Finally, the pattern that I'm going to use to create this sheer underlay piece is this Simplicity Halloween Special. I'm going to be using the front center piece and of course cutting it shorter and adjusting the armholes in order to underlay the other bodice piece and create that sheer piece that you see in the 1911 witch costume drawing. Once you've determined your overall vision and your patterns that you will be using, you want to create a drawing to encapsulate all of the different pieces. In addition to sketching out your design, you want to label the types of fabric. So you can see here I've labeled that the dress is black taffeta, but the centerpiece will be chiffon, the ruffles on the sleeve and the ruffle on the bottom will be chiffon. And then I have labeled the cape as charmeuse for the collar and the ties, but then it's reversible. The charmeuse will be on one side and the taffeta on the other. Because this is just a Halloween costume, this is all polyester fabrics that I was able to get from a dead stock shop, fabricmarkfabrics.com, and I highly recommend them. I was able to get some really nice quality polyester fabrics from them for a very cheap price for this project. If you want to go a step further, you can staple the samples along the bottom here. I haven't actually done that on this one, but I have done that for other projects. Let me see if I can find an example for you guys. Here's one I didn't do the diagram, but I stapled the fabric here. The other thing you want to do besides labeling your fabric and possibly stapling your samples across the bottom is you want to make a list of your pattern pieces that you will need for this. So I'm going to need a bodice, I'm going to need a bodice underlay, I'm going to need my sleeves, my skirt, my skirt ruffles, um, my sleeve ruffles, I'm going to need my cape and my cape collar. and tie, and I'm also going to need my bows for the front of the bodice. So every piece that's coming directly from a pattern envelope, I'm going to put down the pattern envelope that it's coming from. So like the bodice, I'm going to get from the call 6139. I'm going to actually cut out the entire bodice from that. I'm going to get the sleeves from there as well. However, the bodice underlay, the sheer piece, that's going to be a little bit tricky to figure out, is going to come from Simplicity, which doesn't even have a number on it. Perhaps this is the number right here, 0418. And so I'm going to put that on here, Simplicity 0418, so I know what that one's coming from. This is also handy if you ever go to recreate this outfit ever again. You have all the information there for you in one place. My skirt is coming from a McCall's 2056. All of the ruffles are going to just be cut. So I'm going to use my cutting board that has the inches drawn on it, and I'm just going to lay the fabric on top and cut them. So I went ahead and did the math for the sleeve ruffle, 
I'm going to need them to be 2 inches wide times 30 inches long times 2, one for each sleeve. And the skirt ruffle, I'm going to need it 5 inches wide times 60 inches long because that's the width of my fabric times, I accidentally put 2, times 4 to be wide enough to add some gathers around the bottom of that skirt. The cape is coming from McCall 7225 as well as the cape collar and the tie. And if you want to get really detailed, you can write down the pattern piece numbers for each one of these things. So you can go ahead and pull out the instruction sheets for your patterns. So like if I'm looking at cape E right here, my pieces that I'm going to need is I'm going to need piece one and piece three E. And then it actually does not have a piece for the tie on the front. So that means that I'm actually going to have to come up with measurements for the tie on my own. So even just looking at that helps me understand, oh, I can only get the cape collar from here. The cape ties, I'm going to have to do myself. So I'm going to make them three inches wide times 60 inches long, and I'm going to do two of those. So I'm going to write that on there. But I would highly recommend writing down the pattern piece numbers if you are new to this. Once you have all of those details down, then you want to, of course, go ahead and cut out your pattern pieces and then make any adjustments to your pattern piece that you need to for sizing that I showed you in my earlier video in these ser this series about how to pivot and slide and follow Nancy Zeman's method in order to make your pattern pieces fit you correctly. Most of the pattern pieces on these patterns are pretty straightforward. If I had, for example, if I had a bodice that I was fitting to a fitted skirt that had no gathers, I would have to use the string method in order to make sure that it would fit correctly. But because of the gathers, there's some leeway there. So as long as I cut them the same size across, it may be a tiny bit less full or a tiny bit more full than it is on this dress right here, but it will be similar enough that it won't be a problem. The same thing goes for sleeves. If you're combining a sleeve from a different pattern with a bodice from another pattern, you're going to have to most likely use the string method. However, I'm using a sleeve pattern and a bodice pattern, both from the same pattern, so I'm not going to have to worry about checking to make sure that it's going to fit. I will, however, as I previously mentioned, show you how to use the string method if you are doing something where you're doing a sleeve pattern from one pattern and a bodice pattern from another pattern, especially if it's a fitted sleeve. If it's a gathered sleeve, it's kind of like with the skirt. You have a little bit of leeway. If it comes out a little fuller or a little less fuller, it's not going to make or break your design most likely. But if it is a fitted one or you are very particular about the amount of fullness in the sleeve, you need to use the string method. The most complicated part about the Franken patterning for this design is the fact of the sheer overlay, which is actually partially an overlay and partially an underlay. So I went ahead and got the front dress piece for this dress out of the envelope. And then, of course, I got the two front bodice pieces for this dress out of the envelope. And so here is the dress front. Obviously, I do not need a, this piece to be nearly this long. So I'm going to, of course, cut it shorter. And then here is my front center piece. and my side front piece. And I'm just gonna roughly lay them together. Obviously, this peasant dress piece is wider than the bodice piece, which is fine because 
If you look at the drawing, there's some fullness there that's been kind of gathered up at the neckline and then also at the waist area. And so I want this piece to be a bit fuller. The other thing I want to make sure is I want to make sure that this peasant dress piece will come up higher than this front center piece right here because if you look at the drawing it definitely comes up higher than that. The problem is is that I've got to play around with the armholes. There's a couple of issues here with the armholes. The first thing is is when I just kind of lay this about where I would want that neckline to hit. Let me play with these pieces. There we go. That's about where I would want it to hit. Then my armhole, as you can see, for the dress bodice is higher than the sheer part of the bodice. So I'm going to have to play with the armholes here because you have to remember this is a raglan sleeve or peasant boss sleeve for this, which I do not want. The other thing I have to make sure is that I cut this piece long enough because it does go over this front center piece. I've got to make sure that this sheer piece is as long as the center front piece so that it looks correct. I played around with this for quite a while to figure it out and I finally figured out that I was just going to have to cut the neckline on this petite line because every time I tried to cut it on this higher line and then play with the armholes it just wasn't working very well. And then I just took this little notch on this armhole and matched it up with the notch on the other armhole so that the width is about the same. And I had to, in order to fit my sister, she wears a small in the neckline and the shoulders, but then I had to do the pivot and slide on the bodice to pivot and slide out to the large to fit her bodice. And so what I'm just gonna do is I'm literally just gonna lay this on top of here I'm going to use, I'll pin them together and I will use the armhole from this bodice piece, but then I will use the neckline, the petite neckline from this piece. And of course I'll put it on the fold and then I will lay this notch here so I can see how long to cut this. And then I'll just loosely, I'm going to give about an inch here at the bottom so I have plenty of room. I'll just loosely cut down to here so that it's plenty of long to go over top of this front center piece. So that was the most complicated piece and the construction is just as complicated. So stay tuned, I will show you how I did the construction for that. But sometimes your pattern hacking will get a little bit messy. I am gonna give full disclosure here. I actually had to cut this piece out three different times before I got it right. So, Keep in mind, I've been sewing for 30 years. I've been pattern hacking almost as soon as I started sewing, and I still, this is a more complicated piece. So be kind to yourself when you're figuring this stuff out. Figure in a little extra if it's a super complicated part of pattern hacking in order to be able to have the fabric you need in case you make an error. And obviously, if this is your first time trying pattern hacking, I would recommend don't go with something quite this complicated. Go with something a little simpler. Just try putting in a fitted sleeve instead of a gathered sleeve. Try a different skirt. Try a different neckline. Try something like that as opposed to doing something quite this complicated. Be kind to yourself. Okay, so I have the bodice pieces kind of done. You can see where the sheer piece is supposed to go underneath here. I've already attached the back and lined the back neckline. I have all the ties ready for the bows in the front center. And then, of course, I have this piece ready to line underneath the shear piece. Here's the shear piece that I ended up cutting out. And you can see I have the armholes mostly matched right here. Polyester chiffon is the devil, sorry. It does not ever lay the way you want it to. Um, I, the only reason I'm using this is because it was already in my stash, not because I wanted to. Um, I have that already here. And then you can see that it is long enough here. Um, it obviously has plenty of fullness to pull up and be gathered to fit all of this right here. It'll have the gathers right here in the center, kind of like the example does. I may actually end up, I cut the sides straight because I wanted to have enough gathers, 
but I may end up actually just cutting them out of slant here because it seems like there's almost too many gathers to go in the front center there. And then of course I will run elastic here in the neckline to give that. Um, this actually seems a little like it's coming up a little bit high on the bodice when I place the armholes in place. And so I'm thinking that I will probably actually take a little bit off this top edge again and hem it down just a little bit more and then it should hit right about the right spot. This is all a little bit of a guessing game right now, so fingers crossed that it's gonna come out the way I have envisioned, and then um, if not, it's okay. I have more chiffon, and I don't like chiffon, so I really honestly don't care if I use up the rest of it on this project because I'm kind of tired of polyester chiffon. I have heard a rumor that silk chiffon is a dream to work with. It's just polyester chiffon that is such a nightmare. And I need to get myself some silk chiffon and experiment to see about that. But here's how it will kind of roughly look like. Let's put this here. Kind of like that. And then it'll have this coming across the top. And like I said, it's kind of high. It's just barely below the shoulder seams. You don't really want your neckline quite that high. So I'm thinking it will drop some in the center, of course. So I'm thinking I might cut it off just a little bit more. We'll see. I'm going to play with it and see. Okay, this is not the full reveal. You will have to keep watching to see the full reveal of my sister modeling it. This is made for my sister. I can't remember if I said that or not already. Um, and she's about my height. She's actually just a little bit taller than me. So as you can see, I've made the dress form tall enough to approximate her height and padded out the dress form to approximate her measurement. The reason I wanted to show you this part is to show you the different pieces that I used for each part of the dress so that the pattern hacking is hopefully as clear as possible for you. So we have the cape, of course, was made from the McCall's pattern, which I don't even have showing you. You'll have to see that in the full reveal. This was made almost without modification, except for the fact that I shortened it. Part of the bodice was made from McCall's 6139. So the piece right here comes from the McCall's pattern. This taffeta piece that's underneath the chiffon right here comes from the McCall's. And of course, this matching echoing piece over here. The sleeves came from the McCall's minus the ruffles. The ruffles were my own measurement and addition. And of course, the ties were my own measurement and addition. And the back bodice of the dress came from the McCall's. So the majority of the bodice came from the McCall's just with the addition of the chiffon and the ties. So the chiffon underlay, which is currently crooked, I just now noticed, and the chiffon ruffles on here. The skirt came from a different McCall's, 2056. I got lucky because it already had a V cut in the skirt, which matched the other McCall's. This bodice already had a V on it. And so I didn't have to adapt the skirt in order to fit this V-shaped bodice. I could use it just as is. And as I previously talked about, because it had gathers, I didn't have to measure to make sure that the skirt line would fit the bodice line perfectly. The gathers just got a little fuller or a little looser, depending on the original bodice piece in here. The last piece that I used for the dress comes from this simplicity, I think it's 0418, it's not very clear about the pattern numbers. And I just use the top part of the front piece and adjusted the armholes just a little bit to fit these armholes better to create this underlay chiffon piece. And then I just cut it the length I needed and adapted it to fit this V right here as I showed you in the video. So. Hopefully that gives you kind of a clear picture of how I fit the different pattern pieces together to create this look. And I hope you'll hang around to see the full reveal of my sister modeling her witch costume.
I hope you enjoyed the reveal and thank you for watching today's video. If you found today's video helpful, please check out the other videos in this patterning and design series, including last year's Franken patterning video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you're interested in more of my content, ring the bell so that you get notifications each time that I upload, especially since my schedule for uploading is extremely sporadic right now. Don't forget, if you want to join in all the fun of the new Pride and Prejudice dress line launch, that you should follow me on Instagram in order to receive updates on the live book discussions, the Pride and Prejudice watch party, the new photos that will be coming out, as well as the announcement of when these designs will be available for you to commission for yourself. Thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you next time. Happy sewing!